Hi, thanks for joining me. My name is Amy Tallman. I'm Lipan Apache from South Texas. I live here in Austin and I'm a member of Great Promise for American Indians. Today we're going to be making a dream catcher. The dream catcher is a traditional Native American craft. It's said that if you place a dream catcher above your bed, it'll catch bad dreams. Bad dreams get trapped in the web and good dreams are allowed to pass through the dream catcher to the sleeper. Then the bad dreams in the morning burn off when the light of day hits the dream catcher. So a lot of tribes will put dream catchers over their baby's cribs to help their children sleep peacefully through the night and have good dreams. So the supplies you'll need for making a dream catcher are pretty simple. You'll need a hoop of any size or any kind. Today I'm using a six inch diameter hoop but you can use any size hoop that you happen to have. Any kind of hoop you have will work. I'm also going to be using ribbon to make the actual webbing of the dream catcher. You can use yarn or string if you want to. You can also use sinew or artificial sinew, which is a more traditional material. I happen to like the pretty colors that you can get with ribbon as the dream catcher webbing. So I'm going to use blue ribbon today and purple ribbon. So the thing you'll need, um, eighth inch ribbon, and you'll notice I've got two different lengths of ribbon. So I've got one smaller length that's going to be used to braid the loop that's used to hang it. So we'll use that at the end. I'm just gonna set that blue piece aside right now. And you see I've cut this to be about two feet long total, and when it's folded in half, there's about one foot on each side. And that'll give me plenty of ribbon to make the braided loop. The other ribbon I've got cut is a purple ribbon and I've cut about two and a half yards of purple ribbon to make the webbing of our dream catcher. This is probably a little more than we need for this size of hoop, but it's better to have a little extra and cut off whatever's left than to not have enough. You can also add beads in your dream catcher. A lot of times people will add beads, decorative beads into the webbing. I'm not doing that today. We're just gonna do a simple design with just the ribbon and the webbing. So we're gonna start by tying our long ribbon onto the hoop. And you're gonna tie it leaving about a foot extra and that's gonna match the length of ribbon that you've cut to make the loop. So you're gonna tie your ribbon onto your dream catcher with a simple knot, leaving about a foot. This is not exact, but it'll be good enough, about a foot of extra ribbon on one side, and then the rest of the ribbon that you're gonna be using to make your webbing on the other. And I'm gonna make a double knot so that it's nice and secure. So just two simple knots. And it's gonna be important that this knot is good and tight and will more or less stay in place because you're gonna be putting some tension on it. If your hoop has a seam in it, that seam can help hold your ribbon in place. You can also use a little bit of super glue if you want to and glue this in place so that it doesn't tend to slide as you're making your dream catcher. You don't have to if you have a, a hoop that has a little bit of uh, texture to it and you're finding that your ribbon or your whatever you're using for your webbing isn't sliding, then you don't have to glue it, but you can. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is tie a simple knot a little bit further down the hoop. And the way I tie mine, I find um, to be easiest for me, is to bring the ribbon around the back, bring it around the front, and then pull the ribbon through the loop that I made that way. And we'll just pull that through. And I'm gonna move that. All right, so then I've got a simple knot, and I'm gonna slowly, gently, slide it tight. There we go. So now we have our first knot. And then we're gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna bring the ribbon around the back 
and over the front, making a loop, and then pull it through. Space it out about the same distance from the first knot, and pull it nice and tight. All right, and again, pulling the ribbon around the back, through the front, through the loop, okay. And then we're going to space the next knot out about right there. Again, trying to make even spacing between your knots as you go around the hoop. There we go. And one of the reasons we're using these um, looser, slightly um, less secured types of knots one is that they won't come undone later, but the second reason is that as you get to the end, what you want to have is your last knot about half the distance uh, to the first knot as your first as the rest of your knots are separated from each other. So you want to place your last knot at about a half distance away from the first knot because the next one is going to be tied onto this thread. So by making these knots adjustable, you can loosen them and fix your spacing if your spacing is off by the time you get to the end. So then we're going to tie our last knot with the space between the last knot and the first knot about half the distance, bringing the, th the ribbon behind the hoop over the top and then pulling the ribbon through that loop. So I'm going to make sure that the last knot has a distance of about half the space. All right, so then now we're gonna make our next row in the Dreamcatcher webbing and start tying onto the thread or the, the ribbons that we've placed in the Dreamcatcher. So I'm gonna take this ribbon and you wanna make sure your little tail end there stays out of your way. Bring the ribbon behind that first connector, bring it over the top again, making a loop, and then pull your ribbon through that loop. And now you're going to want to have a little bit of tension. So you start this, this is the slightly tricky part, is getting the tension right between the connections in your web. So if you find that you've pulled it too tight or that it's too loose when you start connecting it to the next one, again, these knots are adjustable so you can loosen it up and make some adjustments until you feel like the tension that you've got is, uh, is just right to make little triangles. And so we're gonna do that again with the next one. We'll bring the ribbon around the back, over the top, and through the loop. And again, gently pulling to get the tension just right on that next one. So you see we're starting to make triangles in our web. All right, let's just keep going. This is the part where we need a montage. All right. go. And now we're back to basically where we started. So you can see what we're going to do is just keep tying the ribbon to the center of the next strand in the web. And as we do that, the web will make spirals that get smaller and smaller as they work towards the center. Pull it nice and tight so that again you're getting triangles on your first row and you're starting to make little diamonds on the first rows that you did.
So holding that one in place, we'll pull that nice and tight, voila. Okay, and you can see the dream catcher that I've made here has fewer knots around the edge. You can make the spacing between your knots closer together and have a lot more knots in your web or farther apart like I've done here. For the purposes of this lesson, you can space your knots out a little bit wider like I've done and have a slightly wider web. There we go. And as you get smaller and smaller in the spaces in your web, it can get a little bit trickier to get your fingers through the little triangles and to get the ribbon through the triangles. So it can start to get a little bit tricky. If you reach a point where you can't really get the ribbon through the web, you can always Finish your dream catcher off wherever you are. If you get to a point where you can't, can't get your ribbon through the spaces anymore, you'll tie a knot. But I'm going to keep going because right now I can still get the ribbon through the spaces and we'll just keep making our web a little bit tighter and see if we can get all the way to the middle. All right, look at that. So we're getting closer to the center of our web. And you can see our connections are getting smaller and smaller as we go around. So if you wanted to add a bead to your dream catcher, you could put the bead on before you tie a knot. So you could add a bead and then tie your next knot and the bead would be trapped here in the strand. And that would symbolize a bad dream that's been trapped in the web. We're almost to the center. And this is where it starts to get a little bit difficult to get the ribbon through those holes. You could use a crochet hook to help you get the ribbon through if that would work. And then for advanced dream catcher makers, you can also use more than one color of ribbon. So if I wanted to make a two color dream catcher, 
I would start with one color on this side and the other color on the opposite side and tie the knots towards each other so that they work towards each other and then the, um, each color ties onto the ribbon of the other color. But for right now, we're just gonna stick with one color. All right, so I'm gonna put the ribbon behind this one and we might call that the last knot for this dream catcher. Okay, so we're gonna pull it nice and tight. There we go, tie that last knot, and that might do. So we've got a ring in the center and that ring. So dream catchers, depending on how you make them, will always have a little circle in the center. Sometimes it's a little bit larger and sometimes it's really small, just depending on how you've tied your knots. And that always symbolizes a place where good dreams pass through the dream catcher and then the bad dreams get stuck in the web. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it off right there. Um, I would normally put a little touch of glue on that knot so that it doesn't tend to untie, but right now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off. And then the last step is to make the loop that you would use to hang your dream catcher. And I'm gonna take this blue ribbon that I've cut and I'm gonna put it onto the loop. So I've got half on one side and half on the other side of my hoop. And then with the three strands of ribbon that I now have, I'm gonna start braiding. So the next thing we're gonna do is braid the two strands that I cut together with the one that you left loose when you tied on your web. As you're braiding, you'll notice that you'll probably end up pulling your dream catcher across the table. So to hold it still, you can put something heavy on it to keep it from sliding. I'm going to use this water bottle to add a little bit of weight and to hold my dream catcher still while I braid it. There we go. And so now we'll start to braid those three strands of ribbon together. There we go. And you can make your little braided strand as long as you think you would like it to make a loop to hold your dream catcher. And I think that's long enough. So now, with your loose strands, you're going to put two of them on one side of the dream catcher. So I've got two strands that are going around the back of the dream catcher and one over the top. And then pulling them together, I'm going to tie a knot that'll tie the end of my braid onto the dream catcher hoop. So I'm gonna make a loop around my finger and then I'm gonna pull the ribbon through that loop that I made with my finger. And then I'm going to pull that knot up against the dream catcher hoop. And there you go. So you can cut off any extra and you can leave those as long as you want. If you like having a little bit of ribbon dangling from your dream catcher, you can leave those long or you can cut them off. I'm gonna cut everything off even with that purple ribbon. There we go. And so now they make a little bit of a decorative ribbon hanging down what will be the back of your dream catcher. You can also add feathers hanging from your dream catcher or decorative ribbon um, that'll hang from your dream catcher. And that forms a path that your good dreams are guided down as they work their way through the web and down to, down to your dreamer to bring good dreams in their sleep. So you can tie a piece of ribbon 
to the bottom of your dream catcher and use that to tie on a feather. Usually people use an eagle feather, but those are not available. So you can use any kind of feather that you would like to use to decorate your dream catcher to represent dreams being guided down to you while you sleep. So only good dreams come to you and then the bad dreams get stuck in the web. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed making a dream catcher with me. And uh, I hope you enjoy trying out different colors and techniques for making dream catchers of your own.